to the Prime Go did last week when we did another live unboxing. It literally arrived about three or four hours ago uh, and I've just run to get it. Just got back to the studio and here we are. So welcome people. Uh, it's, it's awesome to be here. It's always awesome to be here in these times. Still working, still in the studio. Uh, and you can see on the screen now the uh, URL, which is to our full review of this, because we actually got time to play with this back in Miami back in January when we could get on planes and things like that. And we did a review of this back then, which you can go and watch if you're interested in this unit straight after this. So that's using this URL down here. Uh, so I'm going to leave that on the screen for a couple of minutes longer now. Uh, and we're going to get on to unboxing this thing. It's an exciting unit because it's a DJ device that has, let's get that off the screen now actually, I think we've probably seen that for long enough. It's a DJ device that has, there we go, no need for you to take a laptop. And it's between the two other DJ consoles from Den and DJ, the cute dinky little Prime Go that we looked at last week, which is currently in my house. We're talking about it going in the back of our car when we go off into the countryside again when we can. Uh, and um, the really big one, which I've got slightly out of shot, which is the big Den and DJ Prime 4, which has got a huge 10 inch screen on it and four faders, but it's big, right? You're gonna need to get a friend to help you to carry it much further than, uh, than you know, around the corner when it's under your arm. This is kind of like in the middle. So this might actually end up being the one that a lot of people go for in this range of DJ devices that don't need a laptop. That's the whole thing about these. You do all your, uh, Preparation if you want to on a laptop first and then you come and plug a USB in and you get it working that way. All right then, so uh, we're going to unbox this live. Uh, so we're going to just check that we are live, check that all the channels are going. You're currently watching this on Facebook. You could be watching it on our Facebook group. You could be watching it on YouTube and on Twitch. We thought we'd bung it over to you Twitch uh, followers as well uh, this time uh, and see if... Uh, See if some of you uh, enjoy this kind of content. If you do, we'll keep doing it for you. Uh, so it's a live unboxing. Now, this is how it's gonna work. We'll unbox it, I'll plug it all in. I haven't even got it out of the box yet, as you're gonna see. Hopefully it will all work. Uh, I will plug it all in and hopefully we can get some music playing. All of this is kind of like, who knows what will happen. Uh, and uh, we'll talk through some of the features, but you guys and girls can ask questions. That's the whole point. And I've actually asked Jason, who is very, very close to this product from Den and DJ, to be around so that if any of your questions are kind of like, got me scratching my head, we can give him a ring, get him on the screen and get him to answer some of your questions as well. So if you have questions for Den and DJ, get those in as well and I will get those dealt with. Right, let's go and have a chat to uh, you guys and girls first, just to make sure we're live and say some early hellos and then we will start with the unboxing of this unit, the Den and DJ Prime 2. Uh, so people, hello. It's great to be here. We do, uh, we do find it increasingly hard to do these things in these times, but uh, but, um, you know, we're pushing on. Uh, a few of you are saying, is that a giveaway? Unfortunately, no, it's not a giveaway. Uh, we're just going to be unboxing this unit and then we'll be making some training on it and uh, all good things like that. Uh, so, no, it's not a giveaway. Hello, just a few hellos. Hi to Juanmi, hi to Rudy, Chris, Amit, uh, to Alex and Papa, who's uh, in SoCal. Good to have you here. Uh, Papa, Julio, uh, wherever you are, we hope you're safe and well uh, in, the, in these times. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, we're definitely live because I can see all your comments coming in, which is cool. So, without further ado, let's do it. You're on Digital DJ Tips, you're on the website, uh, you're on the Facebook page, YouTube page, your Twitch channel of the biggest DJ school in the world. And we love to help you become better DJs and better DJ producers. I'm Phil Morse, I'm the founder of the school, uh, and we like to go live on these channels just to help you out. Uh, every week, we're doing it a lot more than every week at the moment because of lockdown. I just want to give you as much content as we can to hopefully take your minds off the miserableness. It's miserable, isn't it? Uh, so that's what it's all about today. Uh, okay, let's go back to the unit uh, and let's start unboxing this thing. Uh, so, should have some kind of music playing, shouldn't we? So here we go. Here we have a power lead. This is the IEC big power lead, the type that I like to see on DJ devices because it means there's not a brick. It's just this, the transformer is inside the unit, which is really cool. Uh, I've got a UK plug here, which is good. Saves me having to dig out a US adapter to get this thing working. So that's cool. Right, the old getting out the box and kicking the box forward trick. Here we go. So there's the unit. Down in the bottom here, we have a cable. A book, quick start guide, a few other bits and pieces. We'll open that in a minute. Let's just shove that down the back there. Whee! And pop this down here. 
You're watching a live unboxing of the Denon DJ Prime 2 DJ console with me, Phil, here at Digital DJ Tips. Genuinely live, genuinely not unboxed this before. Who knows what we're going to find. So, I'm liking the size of this. I'm liking the size of this a lot. As I say, we did see this back in Miami in January, but times, a lot's happened since then, and I'd forgotten about this. Uh, it's just a nice size. I mean, let's compare it to something. Let's find something to compare it to. Uh, I'm sure we can have to get something of a similar size that some of you will know. I'm just looking at the, uh, looking at what we've got. Let's compare it to the Tractor Control S4. So, it's a tiny bit deeper, especially with the screen, but really not much difference in size to a controller like the Tractor Control S4. So it's definitely a medium-sized controller. It's definitely a medium-sized DJ console. It's not really a controller because it doesn't control software. It's a console to keep the wording strictly correct. Uh, so very, very first impressions of this. Well, it's like a cut-down Prime 4. So you've still got the two effects units at the top. We've got still got two microphones, but the microphones seem to be sharing the low, mid, and high. From memory, that is exactly what's happening here. Uh, the effects units have lost the tiny little screens that, uh, that tell you what's going on when you turn them. Uh, so that's going to be happening on the main screen now. Uh, we've still got our uh, output controls here, but we haven't got a zone output because the Prime 4 has got a zone, which lets you play different music somewhere else. So that's, that's not on this unit. Uh, USB and SD, two USBs on the Prime 4 though. So we're getting this impression that it's just kind of cut down a bit. So the jog wheels appear to be pretty much the same size actually as the Prime 4. However, the pads are smaller, uh, which have the same functions though, which is cool. The uh, the throw is the same here. So you've got the same big long pitch, pitch controls. Uh, but we have got simplified beat gridding controls on here. Just, just a very simple grid edit uh, here, as opposed to the bigger grid area that we had on the Prime 4, we have on the Prime 4. So you're getting a lot of the functionality. Uh, and of course, it's only two channels and it's only two decks. I mean, that's the big difference, right? You've got two, two channels down here. Uh, and um, so you can only control two decks of the software here. There's no, so there's no layer buttons to switch between the decks as well. So that's our kind of first impression of the unit. Um, Let's um, try and get it going, shall we? Shall we plug this thing in uh, and try and get some music playing? Now, I did have a little USB with some tunes on. It was here, but guess what? It does seem to have done a little bit of a runner in the time it's taken me to prepare the live and get on the screen. It's probably down there from where I pushed the box off. Uh, so maybe we can't get some music playing, but we can certainly plug it in and turn it on. But I'll try and find that. It's gonna be somewhere, it can't have gone far. It's gonna be on the floor down there, isn't it? Uh, so let's get this thing plugged in and turned on. Now I've got a pre-prepared pre -prepared mains lead here. So no need to plug in the one Denon provided. Thank you very much. Feels a bit like a cookery show when you say things like that, doesn't it? Here's one I made earlier. Uh, so turning the unit on, we have uh, the usual Denon livery, if you like, of blue, white, and green. Looking very nice. Let's peel these off. There we go, so we're all set up to go in that respect. Uh, and the screen, it's fixed. The screen on the Prime 4 has got a movable bracket on the back. The screen here is fixed. The screen here is smaller as well, it's a seven inch screen. I think that makes it a little bit smaller than an iPad mini. Um, and it looks big enough, certainly after testing the Prime 4. Uh, actually the Prime 2, I should think the Prime Go, I mean. I think the Prime Go might have the same size screen actually down here, I think it might. Uh, but anyway, the screen looks looks cool. Uh, let's get some music plugged in the back. So I'm looking around the back now. Uh, you guys and girls can't see it. Maybe from the other camera you can see around the back. Yeah, you can a bit see around the back. Let's have a look down here. So we've got our um, master output. We've got our booth output here. Um, the zone output is missing, which was another set of XLRs, I believe, on the previous one. And only one auxiliary input around the back here. So we can't plug in record decks and CDJs in the same way that you can on the other one. So it's not really meant to be a standalone unit in that respect. There's one auxiliary input in here, which I'm gonna guess goes to an auxiliary output somewhere. Yes, it does up here. So here there's an auxiliary 
output. So it's just one volume control for whatever you plug in around the back. So that could be your phone, uh, some kind of backup device, uh, but you certainly can't use this with record decks and stuff like that. It's not designed for that kind of use. Uh, all right then, so I wanna get some of your um, shouts, some of your questions. Uh, just before I do, I'm just gonna look on the floor down here and see if indeed I can see the USB that I knocked onto the floor. Uh, I can't, but it's on my desk, which is wonderful. Uh, so there it is, Way. So we can get some music playing in a minute on the unit. Uh, but first, let me, uh, let me um, get a few of the, uh, your, your, your uh, questions and comments. So Jack says, oh man, Phil, you're supposed to savor the peeling off of the protective plastic. Nah, done it a million times. Uh, is a solid screen protector included, like in the Prime 4? Says Eddie, no, there isn't a screen protector included. If there is, I haven't found it yet. It would be here, I guess. Indeed, there is. There you go. Well, we knew there was another box of things we hadn't opened. So, yes, happily, in response to your question, there does seem to be a solid screen protector, which is nice. Let's slot that on live, eh? Let's go and have a go at that. That fits on there like that. Very nice. So glad to have answered that one for you. Uh, there was no reason to have a fixed screen, says Sean. Well, I guess it, it's less fiddly. And I don't know, I'm sure there, there, there was some kind of reason, some decision anyway was made uh, around that, but uh, I don't know what it is. Maybe we can ask Jason later uh, when I give him a ring. In fact, I'm gonna make a little list of questions here that you want to ask Denon DJ. If you've just joined us, this is a live unboxing of this unit, the Denon DJ, let's get that off again. Prime 2, it's literally just arrived here in the studio here at Digital DJ Tips. Uh, and uh, I'm answering questions on it. I'll do what you want me to do with it. Uh, but also, um, any questions you have for Den and DJ themselves, uh, just ask them and I'll make a list of them and then we'll get Den on the, on the line in a little while and chat to them about it as well. So get your questions coming in. Uh, all right then, uh, will it support Serato DJ eventually, says Christopher. Great question, I would hope so. Uh, I don't see why not. I think the Prime 4 does already. Uh, I don't see why not. So uh, yes, I would say it would. But again, let's just ask, uh, let's just ask uh, about Serato support to uh, our friends at Denon uh, when we get them on in a minute. Lots of you want, wanting to know if we're giving this away. No, we're not giving this away, I'm afraid. Uh, our big giveaway is in the census every year, right? So keep an eye out for this year's census. It'll be towards the end of the year when there will be lots of good stuff to uh, to get your hands on. Uh, all right then, uh, so um, the price is 13.99, says DJ Fetter, who's looked it up for someone else, very good. Uh, so this is a perfect replacement to my Denon DJ MC4000, says J Henry 248 over on uh, YouTube. So uh, looks like you're sticking with Denon there. Uh, all right then, so um, let's uh, just see if there's any more questions I can answer before moving back to the unit and starting to hopefully get some music playing into it. Mark says, does it have a HDD port? Yes, it does have an HDD port uh, underneath. So we could have a look at that now if you want. So underneath the unit here, is this area here. Oh, that's the wrong camera angle. Let's get the right one on. Is this area here, and you can unscrew that and put a two and a half inch SATA HDD down there. So that works uh, as with the Prime 4, there's no change there. Uh, so Blake just says, huge shout out to Digital DJ Tips uh, and everyone in the chat from Toronto. Hello, Canadian Massive. Uh, all right then, uh, what are the dimensions of that Prime 2? Bit smaller than the S4 from Tractor. That's all we're saying on this broadcast. I haven't got a tape measure to get you a better dimension than that right now, but it's, uh, it's small, it's nice. It's a nice medium sized two channel controller. Uh, so this is the one you're gonna be playing with on, on your balcony this weekend, says Klaus. I think it might be, yeah. You know, YouTube took down our whole live stream from the weekend. So if you wanna watch Steve, Joey, myself DJing live, uh, be there. We tend to do it at around 5 p.m. London, 11 a.m. Eastern every Sunday. Um, I did it on Monday because it was a holiday here this week. Steve did the Sunday slot this week. But we're just doing some kind of lockdown live streams. We don't normally get a chance to play our music, right? So we do it on Twitch, YouTube, but uh, they don't last very long. So come and watch, come and join in. Uh, but yes, I think this might well be the unit I use this weekend. See how I feel. Uh, does it come with a bag? Says Anders Quabena. No, it doesn't come with a bag. Uh, only the plastic bag with the bits and pieces in. Uh, all right then, uh, the color needs improvement. Blue and green is not too pro. Well, blue, these have been the colors that Den and DJ have used for, for a long time now. So I guess that's just a, 
like it or or don't like it thing, isn't it? Um, all right then, so uh, there's less to break on a fixed screen, says Simon. Yes, it's a good point. So there's one reason for uh, a fixed screen. Uh, all right then, so um, lots of you asking about whether you can put a hard drive in it, so we've already answered that one. Um, uh, will it support virtual DJ, says Nicholas. Well, will virtual DJ put the time in to make it work, make their software work with that? I would say they probably will. They've already done the Prime 4, I believe, so I don't see why that wouldn't happen. I think you just hold on for a bit and that will probably uh, probably arrive for Virtual DJ with all the screens working and everything. Uh, I might switch to Denon since the new uh, record box updates came out, says Papa Tulo. Uh, so yeah, the record box updates have definitely split people uh, with this subscription model and all that. Uh, all right then, and Eric, is Denon going to do the same crazy subscription thing with the Prime software as Pioneer has done? I don't know. Uh, I will I will ask them for you. Uh, is subscription coming for Denon stuff? If you're watching Denon people who will get a phone call from me in a minute, prepare your answers. Um, send me one send me one my way and I'll let you know how good it is, says Leon. Uh, so uh, we'd love to, but so we're not the people with the uh, the big pile of these things, unfortunately. Um, does it include Wi-Fi and streaming capabilities? If we get time, I might try and actually get our tidal working on this. How about that? Uh, and I can demonstrate the streaming capabilities. Uh, all right then, uh, right, lots more of your questions are coming in uh, and uh, we have uh, confirmation that Den and DJ are with us, answering questions already in the Q&A. This was someone asking whether you could turn the waveforms vertically. I'll show you how to do that. Someone showed me how to do that on the Prime Go. I'd forgotten that even existed. So I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Right, should we try and get some music playing on this? Have the USB here. Let's head back to the unit and show you hopefully how easy it is to get music playing. So we plugged in the uh, cable uh, here in the USB. I'm going to put my drive which has just got some tracks in it. I've pre-analyzed on the software uh, and I will switch to the other view so you can see what's going on here. So here on the screen uh, I, I unfortunately can't zoom any more into the screen but we can see the tracks on here. There's a couple of tracks on here. Uh, there's a playlist on here with tracks in. Uh, in fact, there's no playlist. There's just they're just tracks. I've just thrown tracks on there. There's a couple of tracks on here that I've pulled out from Joey's music, which I know isn't going to get us an instant ban for playing live. So let's just hit the load button there on this one here. This is now loaded onto this deck here, and you can see the track here uh, by turning the volume up there. I can now see it coming out of here. By turning the master up here, I can see it here. I can't actually hear it yet. That's quite normal with our system. I normally have to unplug and plug this in quickly to get that to work. Uh, ah, I can see why it's not actually playing uh, because I haven't plugged in the speaker. So you can probably hear it. Yeah, I can see that you can hear it. I just can't. You probably couldn't hear me then because the music was too loud, right? I was saying that I can't hear that in the room because the speaker is uh, not plugged in. But hey, I don't care as long as you can hear it. That's the important thing. So there you go. The music is now playing through the master and uh, it's all working as we would think, as we would expect. I'm just going to turn my computer volume up a little bit so I can hopefully uh, at least hear something coming out there. I can't, but hey, I'm a pro. I can deal with it. All right then, so uh, so if you want to change this view, that was one of the questions, you hold down view and press that button there. Oh, actually, which one is it? I think it was view and that. No, someone remind me. Denon, remind me how to change the view to, uh, uh, to horizontal waveforms. I've forgotten. Uh, it could be something slightly different to on the other controller. I'm sure someone's going to remind me soon enough in the comments. We will show you that in a minute. Uh, it's Slip my mind how that happens. Uh, all right then, so let's have a little tour through the unit now. Let's get that music playing while we do it. Uh, so what do we have? At the top here, master, booth, auxiliary. Two effects units, one here and one here. So this is effects unit number two here that I can turn on. You can select the effects. It tells you on the screen what you're selecting. Then you've got your parameter and your wet and dry on the effects as well. And the little controls for these that uh, would normally have been on little screens here saying what you've selected in the parameter is all showing up on the screen. Again, it's gonna be hard for you to see that. So the effects are still there and present and you've got two of them. Uh, all right then, so we've got our performance hot cues. Hot cues are down here. I'm setting the cues now, although you can't see that. I already had some hot cues set from previously, that's why. So the hot cues, there you go, they're all working. Hope you can hear that, I can't. Uh, but that's all working as you would think. We've got the loop roll. 
I can see that's working on the screen. Uh, we've got a slicer, normal loops, auto loops, so all that stuff's there. Uh, this is all pretty standard. We've got a, st a stop time control, which I don't think the Prime 4 had from memory. Uh, so this is just going to make the track stop a lot quicker when you, or slower when you hit stop like that. There you go. I can make it even longer. Really long stop there, or just have it direct like that. Uh, okay, down here, all the usual controls here for controlling the screen. The screen is a lovely touch screen, so we can throw... Uh, well, I say we can throw, for some reason I can't at the moment, maybe it's because it's a loaded track. Uh, but you can uh, use a touch screen, for instance, to skip through the track. See there, I'm skipping through the track like this. You have to pause it to do this, although you can undo that in the settings. So the settings, let's actually move over and have a look, look at the settings here, because for some of you who might not have seen this, there's an awful lot of good stuff going on in here. And in order to make this a bit more easy for you, I'm just going to zoom in on the camera angle that we're looking at so that you can see the screen a little bit better. So. Let me just zoom in like that and then I'll move the controller down a little bit so you can see the screen itself a little bit better. Console. I've got to stop calling it a controller. Old habits, right? So by holding down, let's see, this view, view button here will give us the, the, the library or it'll give us this, this, com, this view where we can see both waveforms and then a smaller version of the library. Uh, the search, by the way, is really nice. You get this QWERTY keyboard here. Uh, so the search will let you quickly search for tracks uh, and normally one or two letters and the track you want will appear. But holding down this button here gives you this screen here with lots of adjustments. So we've got a utility menu where we can uh, do the Wi-Fi network. We can... Uh, we can adjust nudge sensitivity. We can adjust whether we get a track preview uh, capability or not. Screen brightness, so I can make this a bit dimmer. There you go, so it's easy for you to see that you guys can see this now. Uh, mic attenuation, uh, you can decide whether the booth gets the microphone or not to help with feedback and stuff like that. EQ, so you can have an isolator EQ or a normal EQ. Uh, there's filter resonance, so the filters can sound uh, more or less kind of musical and extreme. Uh, and uh, Q button settings and so on. Uh, here's where we put Tidal, get Tidal working on it, uh, and a few other bits and pieces in there. And then other stuff we've got in here, uh, we've got preferences. So here's where we can alter some of the stuff that we would probably change and not change again, whether the track starts at the beginning or the queue position, the default speed range of your controls, uh, the sync button, whether it toggles or holding down shift disables it, the sync mode, uh, and lots of other things, quantization, uh, whether cues are momentary or whether they trigger the track playing, no matter whether the track's paused or playing in the first place, uh, whether loops are smart or just stick to exactly when you press them, uh, and um, other bits and pieces here as well, including quite nicely at the bottom, you can change the colour of the decks to suit uh, something that suits you better. Uh, so Digital DJ Tips colours would be those two actually. I'm not sure where that actually shows, but uh, anyway, there we go. I set our colors on there. We're on brand, brand people. Uh, so that's the kind of screen there. Uh, and really, we've just talked through, you can see a more in-depth look at all this stuff on our full review. But I've just talked you through the main stuff that you need to know about uh, the, the, the unit. Really, part of the unboxing was for me to give you those first impressions. And the first impressions, let's just zoom out a bit so that we can uh, see the whole unit again now that we've had a chance to uh, look at that screen. The first impressions of this are good quality, metal, nicely built. The fact that the screen doesn't move in a way is actually, I don't know, I quite like it. I always felt it was kind of a weak spot on the Prime 4. Um, big, big, big screen hinged, you know, weak spot for me. Uh, it's much more portable. They have... Um, kind of got the same look and feel. You don't really feel like you're missing anything. Uh, you know, the important buttons are still pretty big. Uh, these are a lot smaller. These are a little bit smaller, but this, the jog wheel, all the same size. The faders, I think, are probably exactly the same size. Uh, the layout here, these are slightly smaller controls and slightly more squashed together, but you still got big metering. The screen's big enough. Overall, it feels like a nice compromise. Obviously, what you are compromising is a lack of standalone mixer capability at the back. Um, and, um, the channels, so if you need the channels, if you need to plug in extra sources, if you need four channels, you DJ the four channels, it's a no-brainer, you're gonna go for the bigger one. Uh, but a lot of people, I think, will find this one to be, as I say, a nice compromise between the, the, the hugeness of the Prime 4, all singing, all dancing Prime 4, and the, the undoubted um, cuteness, but also compact and slightly niche Prime Go. And actually on the Prime Go, I found the jog wheels when I was DJing it on the live stream at the weekend, so small that I turned off the vinyl mode. So vinyl mode is the mode that when you're DJing, lets you uh, scratch like this, right? So when the music's playing, you can do all this stuff. Turn that off, the whole jog wheel is just a nudge, right? And I actually found it easier to set them like that on the, on the tiny little Prime Go because I kept accidentally going to nudge and doing this. 
So um, on this unit, you have none of that. It's very, very clear what you're doing uh, when, you're, when you're DJing with it. And I would leave vinyl mode on all the time for that. All right then, let's go back to your shouts and comments and then any questions we haven't answered, we will dial in Jason from Den and DJ to answer those for us. Uh, all right then. Um, uh, Michael says, apart from the two channels, the zone output and the screen size, this is the same as the Prime 4, which is a great target piece for those not needing the bigger brother. Uh, all right then. Um, so um, is there a jog adjust, says Steve? No, you have got no attention on the jog there at all. You're, you, you're stuck with how the jogs are um, are done. If it's not implemented yet, would it, be it would be nice to do a shift plus Q to achieve split Q. Split Q is where you DJ with the master output in one ear and whatever you're queuing in the other. It's very useful for DJs who are DJing in a place where the DJ booth monitors aren't very good or if you're DJing at home in these COVID times and everyone's asleep and you want to get a DJ set done. It's a nice way of DJing. Laid back loop DJs like that all the time. Uh, so I'll ask about split queue for you. Uh, all right then. Uh, I've been DJing from my house balcony, says John. Good on you, John. Yep, we're all bedroom DJs now, aren't we? Uh, does it support FLAC or WAV? I know it supports WAV. Uh, I'm not sure about FLAC. It probably does. We will ask Den and DJ. Uh, all right then. Um, I'm looking to get away from Tractor and looking to purchase this device. Does it do video? No, it doesn't do video. Although if you're using it to control software that does video like Serato, I don't think it works with Serato yet. We're going to ask. Or Virtual DJ. Yes, you can use it with video. Um, so Steve has very kindly given us the dimensions. Here they are. Height 4.73 inches, width 25.39 inches, depth 16.15 inches. Can you do inches with, with metric fractions? I'm not sure. Uh, and uh, uh, depth 16.15 inches. Uh, anyway, thank you for that, Steve. Uh, will Den and DJ have MIDI sync or clock out to sync live gear or drum machines? Great question. Is MIDI sync of some kind coming? I mean, it's got round the back, the ability to plug in, you know, um, network and stuff. So maybe that's coming. Uh, is Beatport Link in the future for Denon? Great questions. Uh, Denon DJ people, we're going to be coming to you. Get your answers ready. If your answers are mm, not sure, get the wording right uh, because it's all coming. This is so amazing, says Jamal. Um, so Den and DJ have kindly shared all the specs for you guys and girls as well, which you can find uh, on the URL I'm going to put on the screen now. So if you are interested in getting the specs, then head over to here, denanddj.com slash prime dash two dash prime two X U S. Uh, work on your vanity URLs, Denon. Uh, so there you go. Uh, also, that's links to from our review, which is on a far more easy to remember, uh, a far more easy to remember. Um, URL. However, having been all cocky, uh, I've no idea how to get back to that URL now. So many comments have come in that they've uh, they've trumped it in our system. Uh, but anyway, uh, Denon uh, DJTips.co slash Prime Two. Uh, thank you, team, for reminding me about that. All right then. Um, so, what's the best type of thumb drive to use? Any that works. Um, we use Corsair thumb drives. Uh, Corsair Survivor is the one I use. It would survive a nuclear bomb. That. Uh, but anyone got any recommendations for thumb drives? I'm using an old one that I was given by a rep at a DJ show years ago there. Um, so yeah, if anyone's got any favourite thumb drives they'd like to share with us, uh, we're all ears. We can maybe help you out there uh, live on the call. Uh, all right then. Um, why no colour waveforms? Well, they are colour, but they're just three colour rather than full colour, I would say. Shift and view in order to get, ah, shift and view in order to get those waveforms horizontal. Let's go do that now, people, because I know some of you wanted to know that. Right, so the waveforms are currently vertical. Uh, holding down the shift button, which is uh, here and view, will give me horizontal waveforms. And there we go, we've now got horizontal waveforms. You see, they've flipped over to this horizontal view. Now I can load this track onto that deck and show you the waveforms parallel. There you go, you see? Waveforms are now both parallel on there. Deck one and deck two. So there you go. If you prefer that view, that's how to do it. Uh, all right, there more questions before we, we're doing a live unboxing of the Den and DJ Prime 2. You've missed some of it. So if you've just joined us, watch on the replay. You'll be able to watch this on YouTube and Facebook. Just click the beginning again. Uh, and if you uh, want to know when we go live, just subscribe because then you'll get a notification as long as you turn your bell or, or your show these posts first on on Facebook, okay? So uh, it's much more fun live, things always go wrong. Uh, all right then, um, so um, more questions before, I'm just, are the effects post fader, says Crisp uh, Heller over on Twitch. Yes, they are post fader, Crisp. Uh, so uh, good news for you there. 
Um, a couple of you saying you can't hear the music, uh, but anyway, um, no idea why that stopped working then. Should have been. Oh, it's bound to be my fault. There you go. Maybe it's just quiet. Uh, all right then, question. I see a lot of reviews of all the DJ gear. What's your favorite and why? You cannot say that. They've all got pluses and minuses. You know, it's like saying, do you prefer driving a lorry or a car? You know, it's just like, what do you want it for? Uh, but we've got a great gear guide that you can get on the site. Uh, if you go to D DJ Tips, Digital DJ Tips, click any of the subscribe links, we'll send you a gear guide that talks you through all the options and gives you our top five in all the different areas of DJ gear. This is standalone gear. This gear is designed, designed to work without a laptop. So if you want to DJ in the DJ booth with a laptop, well, this isn't for you. But if you love the idea of DJing without a laptop, well, you've just ruled out all the DJ controllers that are meant to work with a laptop, right? And that's just one question. So there's lots of questions you need to ask before you decide what the best, if you like, DJ gear is. Uh, all right then, um, why is it so pricey for a two channel? Because it's got a computer built in, Robert, uh, and that's where a lot of the money goes. Um, all right then, um, uh, I'm gonna just have a quick scan down here and make sure that there's nothing that uh, I want to ask on your behalf to Den and DJ before we get them on the screen. Uh, and uh, I'm going to, um, I'm near the end of the questions now. Uh, so, yep, there's another one. Flexible beat grids, Vic is asking about. I want to know the answer to this one as well. That's a good one to ask. Uh, and yeah, I think, uh, I think that's probably it for the questions for Denon, but I will keep an eye on them. Right, let's get Jason in. A few of you are saying, uh, in fact, my team is saying, can you turn the click off when the comments come in? I could, but I don't know how to do it. I saw the button once, tried to find it earlier, and I couldn't find it. So sorry if you're getting clicks coming in every time I, uh, every time uh, someone comments, but hey, it means a lot of people are comment commenting, doesn't it? Uh, right, let's get Denon DJ on the line now. I'm gonna call in Jason. Uh, Jason, the call is incoming. You are live on Digital DJ Tips, do not swear. Uh, and uh, as soon as he answers, we'll get him on. Hello, Jason. Hello, Phil. Hello, Digital DJ Tips. It's a joy to have you here, Jason. How is lockdown treating you? It looks like you've got a few toys there to pass the time with. Yeah, like you. You know, I've got a studio filled with DJ gear, so I'm just creating some content for our viewers and users. So, been busy, very busy. Good, awesome. Right, Jason, are you ready? Because we've got a hell of a lot of questions coming in and I'm sure there'll be more once people see that I've managed to get you on the line. You ready? <laughs> Indeed, bring it on. Cool, all right then. So question number one, Jason, from our crowd. Why has it got a fixed screen instead of a bendy screen like uh, like on the, uh, on the Prime 4? So the, the reason why the Prime 2 has the fixed screen is one, because we want it to be portable and compact. And you mentioned it earlier, Phil, you know, when you're portable and bringing something around, you want one less part or piece that could, you know, is, is probable to failure. The, the screen uh, angle that it's fixed at is the same angle that you find on a professional media player like the SC5000s and the SC6000s. So we've, we've done our homework and we've ensured that the screen so it's uh, this angle, kind of angle there, right? So yeah, ac yeah, absolutely. So that angle there, you know, is it's best for viewing um, in, in most environments. And it's also a great angle for touch interactions. So um, that's why the screen is fixed on the Prime 2. OK, cool. So what about Serato compatibility? People want to know whether we're going to get it working with Serato at some point. So at this time, there, there's no plans, but, you know, that can always change with all of our products. We're, we're continually update, updating them. So, you know, having um, applications or DJ app, applications work in the future is something that we could work towards. Uh, again, you know, it's all going to depend on how much people are really asking for it. But at launch, it will work uh, primarily as a standalone device. Okay, so another another question that's kind of uh, that's kind of there based on this that a couple of people have asked, is there any plan in the future to have it kind of fully laptop software controllable, like even from Den and DJ, from Engine? Is Engine going to be the kind of software where you can plug in your laptop and DJ from that as well, like other, other DJ software? Any plans for that in the future? Yeah, without showing our cards, you know, we have a number of plans, some very exciting releases just around the corner. Um, it's definitely possible. Uh, I just can't, you know, confirm anything that's that we haven't officially announced or made public yet. Well, that's, but, that's yeah, that's fair enough. Daniel, does the Prime Two make a cup of coffee? <laughs> if it does, I didn't know about it, and I could stay in my office if it was making coffee all day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pete says, "Can you zoom the waveforms?" Yes, you can zoom the waveforms, Pete. I didn't do yep. it then, but you can pinch them to zoom, yeah, right? Yeah, just pinch. Yep. Shall we have a go at that now, just to show that it's possible? Oh. 
Oh, my sure. cameras have gone very, very strange. No, I think we'll, we'll stick with chat. We'll stick with chatting together for the time being. Hopefully okay. they'll, they'll mend themselves. Uh, all right then. So um, are the buttons still plastic, still hard plastic? Yes, they are. I can answer that. That's the, uh, that's the style here. Um, uh, I'm just scanning. The, there's so many questions. There's a lot of interest in this here. So I don't want to miss anyone's important questions. Um, so here's yes, a good so one from Alex. Alex says, do the cue points that I made in Rekordbox transfer over when I plug in my USB? Also, does the Denon software contain intelligent playlists or something like that? So two questions there. One, do cue points come over from Rekordbox? Yes, so cue points come over when you plug in your drive directly into the player. So you don't need to use Engine Prime to convert your Rekordbox collection, but you can also use Re uh, Engine Prime to import the full collection if you want to analyze all your music, prepare everything in advance. But both ways, if you're plugging in direct or if you're going through the computer, all of your playlist, hot cues, and your memory loops will also be imported into Engine Prime. Okay, brilliant. And the second question was, does it contain intelligent playlists? So smart playlists, give me everything marked 1990. Yeah, so so there's a filter system in Engine Prime which allows you to set parameters. So you can say, show me tracks within a certain BPM, and then you can set a second filter, say, only show me the tracks that are in this key. So there is a manual process to creating smart list, but there's no intelligent um, algorithm at this time. But again, you know, uh, Engine OS is always evolving. We're always giving updates to our customers, free updates. So that's definitely something that we could work towards in the future. So another question along those lines, is Den and DJ planning on going subscription like uh, Rekordbox? Been some backlash against that uh, today and yesterday. No, there's no plans to, to move to a subscription model. As I said, all of our Engine OS products, they're all going to be continually updated and those updates will be free of charge. So. Uh, there there's go. no plans so there's, for a, there's some clear blue water there between the two approaches, people. Uh, Lebron says, can you access saved loops via the Prime 2? Yes. So if you go into the loop pad mode, you can see all of your saved loops. You can even create saved loops on the fly. So you just punch in and punch out. And once you release the loop, it will be saved to that pad. And then you can delete it using shift plus the, the pad. Nigel says, are there any product leaks in the background? <laughs> Jason. <laughs> I think I did my due diligence to clean up the shop before we made this call, but... Uh, look at you, bit of panic no. there. <laughs> uh, tell him to put that shirt in the Denon store and I'll buy a few to DJ with, says Michael. So uh... okay. Embrace the future, all right. Noted, yeah, we, um, we, we did release the, uh, the merch store um, last week and we've got a lot of different options for hoodies and t-shirts and stuff. So if you haven't checked it out, just go to djshop.com. Uh, lots of great gear on there, and, and we're going to update that stuff in the future too. Paradise Warriors wants to know if you can adjust the jog wheels from heavy to light. I'm going to say no, unless there's something I didn't spot, Jason. There's no mechanical um, tension adjust, but you can adjust the nudge sensitivity within the settings if you find it a bit, a bit sensitive or not sensitive enough. Okay, cool. So uh, let's quick fire some of these. Any plans for MIDI sync at some point? Uh, so MIDI sync, there's no actual MIDI out uh, on the device but the product does have Wi-Fi. So I'll leave it at that. Okay, so the product has Wi-Fi enabled to link, uses Wi-Fi to link together various pieces of enabled equipment. So it wouldn't be a big leap to fix that one up, people. Um, so I'm pretty sure this is yes, but does it have FLAC support as well as WAV? It does, yep. Yeah. Uh, all right. All rest. Yep. So people asking about split Q. Is that something that can be software enabled or that's on the plan? So, you know. That's already on the Prime 2. There's a button right below the two headphone controls. It says split Q. Well, there you go. It's always good. Yep. To be told things that make you look immediately stupid, Jason. Thank you for that. Uh, but Sorry, no, in all seriousness, we've cleared right. it up. That's the important thing. Right. Yeah. Beatport Link. Any plans to get Beatport Link in as a streaming service? Yes, absolutely. So right now we're finishing our work on SoundCloud. Hopefully we'll have the SoundCloud release in a few weeks. Uh, right after that, we, um, we're, we're at the same time, we're still working on the Beatport uh, link as well as BeatSource. So those will follow after the SoundCloud, but those are currently uh, in development and we are testing right now. So those are looking good and they should be available uh, in just a few weeks. Okay, well, that's good news, isn't it, people? Um, and flexible beat grids, any engine advance coming on beat gridding so that we can beat grid our music that doesn't play ball with, with, uh, with, with fixed beat grids. Yep, so we're, we're also working on the flexible beat grids right now for both the engine desktop software and also on the hardware. So you'll be able to adjust flexible beat grids using just the controls on the Prime 2 uh, in the near future. So that's also in our development queue right now. 
Brilliant. Uh, just a shout out to the person spamming the hell out of our YouTube channel. You're going to be banned within a few minutes and you'll never be able to do that again. So why? <coughs> why bother? All right, then. It's, it's just honestly bored. Um, so, um, so and talk a bit more about the record box compatibility. People are interested in the compatibility, not only with record box, I think, but with Serato and other DJ software. How can you... Um, how does it integrate? How does engine integrate so that you can, if you're used to another system, you can start using this? What's, what's there to help people? So yeah, with engine prime, we try to make it as easy as possible for people to switch between, you know, Serato, Tractor, record box and engine OS. We want to make sure that, you know, if you want to use this system at this gig, you can use it. If you want to use Serato at a different gig, you can use Serato. So one of the ways that we um, allow that to happen is through engine prime. So we have integrated iTunes, Tractor, Serato and record box libraries directly in our software. So you just click the update the library button. It brings in all of your playlists, crates, hot cues and loops. Once you have them in your software, you can just click and drag them over into an engine prime crate. It's, it's pretty simple and straightforward, and we've got lots of uh, great tutorial videos on YouTube that show the whole process of how to do that. The, uh, the other uh, nice thing is that the player itself, as I mentioned before, reads record box drives directly, so you don't have to use the software. You just take your memory stick that's been prepared in record box, stick it in the Prime 2 or any one of our Engine OS players, and it will pull up all your playlists and hot cues and loops. So that means that you don't need to have a laptop to convert. If you've got a record box stick, you can just plug it in and use it people. Correct. All right then, so Kevin, here's a great question. Uh, will cloud be coming for Engine where you can upload your own music collection so you can stream your own collection and not stream something else like Tidal or whatever? We are definitely uh, focusing, uh, you know, we understand that cloud support is big and important to users. Uh, as I mentioned, it has Wi-Fi, it also has Ethernet to connect to the internet, so there would be no reason for us not to do that. Without confirming anything, uh, it's definitely, you know, something that we're, we're very interested in doing in the future. Cool, um, all right then. So, and another question has just popped in. Do you, does Denon, or I'm gonna expand this to the In Music Empire, uh, have any plans to release beginner or intermediate level and size controllers with this kind of technology that don't need a laptop and stuff? Hmm, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. There we go. We'll have to wait and see people. Um, all right then. Uh, I think we're done. I think we've covered everything people were, were asking, more or less. And thank you for being game and coming on here without knowing what the hell I was going to ask you, Jason. And, <laughs> I love it. Um, no, coloured waveforms, actually. Great. That's one I recall. I didn't write it down. People are saying, I, I, any plans to make op options to have different colours on the waveforms and stuff? I guess aesthetically or whatever. Yeah, that, that one's come up a bit. You know, there's, there's really no plans at the moment to do that. Um, you know, before I do go, I just want to mention that if anyone has a feature request of something that they want to see in any one of our Engine OS products, denondjforum.com is a great place for collaboration and sharing feedback. And we're always checking there to see, you know, what are the popular requests and trying to implement as many of those features as possible. So if you haven't already created an account, go to the, the denondjforum.com and um, yeah. Join your, uh, share your feedback there. Cool, thank you, Jason. So what about recording, says Sol? You can record on it. You just stick a um, drive in and hit record, right? Yeah, you can record to any one of your connected media sources. Yep, directly on the unit. Uh, and there was another great one actually from Lebron who says, is there a daytime mode coming for the screen? I actually DJed in bright, 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 low sunlight on the Prime Go at the weekend, Jason. And obviously any, any screen, iPad, anything in, in bright sunlight is gonna be hard. Is there any uh, screen inversion option coming or, or, or just way of making a daytime setting to make it easier for DJs doing that kind of thing? We're, we're definitely investigating how to bring a day mode uh, into Engine OS. Absolutely. Final question, DJ Nachi. When will Prime Go or Prime 2 become available? There's a long wait. Well, Prime 2 is available now. We started shipping yesterday, so check the local retailers for the Prime 2. Uh, Prime Go will follow in just a few weeks. We're proof of that because this unit's arrived here. So uh, there we go. Um, so Jason, thank you very, very much for joining us. This has been Digital thank DJ you. Tips with Jason Stout from Den and DJ answering all your questions about the Prime 2, which is out as of today. That's the news. We hope you found this useful. Um, Jason, you can get back to your music making and fun now. Thank you very much for joining us. All right. Thanks, we'll Phil. See you again, see yes. you again soon. Uh, and Bye. there you go, people. This is our review of this unit, the, uh, or, or rather our unboxing of this unit. You can see the full review at djtips.co slash prime2. 
uh, djtips.co slash prime2 to see the full review of this. But meanwhile, from me here, at the Digital DJ Tips, a very, very abandoned studio. I'm, only, I'm, I'm managing to isolate and be in the studio because there's none of the other team here and haven't been for weeks. Uh, but from the abandoned Digital DJ Tips bunker, uh, it's been a pleasure to be here. All that's left for me to say is get good, stay home, make the moments and uh, stay strong. And uh, any other questions, just keep asking them on YouTube, on our groups, underneath the Facebook video, the Facebook live stream. We will answer them, we will get to you, especially if you're watching the recording. And please do share and like if you've enjoyed this. Okay, so from the Digital DJ Tip Studio here in Gibraltar, goodbye, thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you again next time. Join us at the weekend, there might just be another live stream. See you later, bye.